in 2014, the, my aunt who passes away, the day we, 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 we have her cremation, same evening, Patrick, there was a storm here that has not been seen before. It came and blew down my greenhouse. Quarter acre greenhouse. Big, 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 big. Down, all of it. Patrick, by 11.15 a.m., I had made a decision. I'm done. I am done. In two weeks, I was done. Wow. Finished. That's how you ended your dairy farming journey. Yeah, and, and my drunk guy, so I told him, the day, you'll just stay here, I'll pay you. The day the last cow lives here, and you follow it out. <laughs> <laughs> then you come. Wow. How is life after retiring from uh, dairy, the dairy journey, the dairy farming journey? It must be like five years of... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, five years now. Um, I'm, I'm still within the industry. I still speak to farmers. I still share my... In fact, people say I'm a consultant. I don't like that term. I like to say mini Rafiki Amkulima. A friend to farmers. Yes, a friend to farmers. I share these experiences that I've had so that they don't make the mistakes that I made. Especially, my, my most favorite category is, is the startup farmer. Because you go to a lot of dairy farms, you're going to sort problems that came from inception. Before, before you go to, to the startup farmers, eh? I know you have, uh, apart from uh, that job being a friend to farmers, anything else you are doing? Oh, yes. Um, I have, I have once been affected by Corona, so I used to do event management uh, for corporate, you no know, conferences and stuff like that. And then the other one, uh, which started with Corona, really, it was a hobby. Can we so, have a walk and see your hobby? Oh, yes, 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 we can. Now, how is uh, this your canoe thing? Okay, so... M maybe you can explain us something small, eh? Okay. So what, what I do here is uh, American style barbecue. Uh, it's called offset smoking. What we do is we burn firewood and that cooks the heat and the smoke cooks the meat. Uh, it's kind of like a convection oven something. So the, the, the heat is away from the meat and travels through the meat and out. So what, what I'll show you now is what's called an offset smoker, a traditional offset smoker. This has been locally fabricated from, uh, again, my a lot of research and being passionate about things. So I was able to learn how this thing works and got a funded to, to, to make it. It's unusual. It's not something that, that uh, people have done here. So I'd need to explain exactly what you're seeing. Okay, that's fine. Carry on. Okay. So um, We burn the firewood on this side. So the, the firewood goes in there. There's a fire, there's a, this, this is called a firebox. And there's a fire basket inside there that's holding the charcoal or firewood that's, that's going to burn. Then there's an opening between the firebox and the cook chamber. So this is the cook chamber firebox and the chimney. Do you use a, a special type of uh, firewood or just any? Um, ideally, there are certain woods to use, but the, the basic rule of thumb is to use hardwood. Hardwoods, those burn better, they burn hotter fires, because there's a certain amount of heat that you need to maintain throughout the cook, so that it, it cooks evenly and it doesn't dry out. So one of the beauty of this style of uh, whatever you find in your butcheries is there's no open fire. So it doesn't dry out the meat. The meat remains very moist for the duration of the cook. So when, once you burn it there, the firewood and all its flavors, for the most part, what we get through is smoke flavor. Certain trees have distinct tastes that they can impart into the meat. But your palate needs to be very, very good. 
so that you can be able to tell that exact flavor but you can you can pick out the smoke flavor from it so a lot of people who've had that meat uko ushago like the one that's dried over over where the cooking place is they they appreciate that that taste but the beauty about this style of cooking is meat is still moist and it's properly done okay so the the cook chambers these are the cook chambers yeah and uh, whatever I've been uh, at today is here. So the heat comes in that way. Then when you close the doors, the heat circulates inside. It circulates that way and then it goes out through through the chimney. So the, then it passes through the meat, the meat cooks. But it takes very long. This style of cooking takes... Like six, uh, we six. can see there's some chicken there. Yeah. How long has it taken you to, um, to prepare that one? Uh, it's about 2.30 now, so from 7.30 in the morning. And now it's ready? Yeah, yeah it's fully done. It's That's fully almost done. Uh, seven hours? Uh, should be, yes. Wow. Seven hours. Now, what, uh, what can you explain as uh, something uh, more in details on what happens here? Okay, so the, the heat, as, as it goes round, and, uh, the heat and smoke, it passes through the meat, and the meat gets that heat. So because it's not direct heat like fire, it takes a long time to pick that heat. But in that long time, it cooks slowly, very, very slowly. Like if you boiled meat on very low heat, you, you notice over time it breaks down. You can literally pull the meat apart. That's what happens with this. But there's no water to boil. So this, this is cooking. It's almost that boiling, but it's cooking very slow. So you render out a lot of fat. A lot of the meat is, is well done and it's not dried out. So it's, it's a very, it's very tasty meat, actually. And that's uh, the chimney. Yeah, this is the chimney. What, what happens is there's a correlation between the chimney and the fire. The height of the chimney allows for a draw, what's called a draw. So when this does, if, if you can make these um, chambers fully sealed, because because it's chuma, once it's, they, they run, uh, run grinders and everything, the metal expands. So it's very difficult to shut it completely. So there's a, a bit of leakage of fresh air coming in, which drops the temperature. But ideally, what should happen is that if this is almost airtight, the chimney pulls, because it's hot air rising, it pulls fresh air and keeps the fire burning, and it goes that way. So as it circulates this way, it's actually being pulled out not being pushed this way so it's the pull from the chimney that um gets keeps we are going back. to to the uh you might be interested uh, towards the end of the year mm. to have our barbecue in our respective homes yes. do you tell this system yes um what, what i'm currently doing because uh, one thing i've realized with these offset cookers is they take a lot of space a lot of people don't have this space I'm, i mean i'm still on the farm here yeah, there's, there's still a bit of space. A lot of people don't have this space. So what I'm doing now, there's a design I'm working on that instead of going vertically, uh, uh, sorry, horizontally across, it is upright. So the footprint is very small. If you live in an apartment, for example, you can be able to place it in the balcony and that one will be able to run more on charcoal than firewood. So even if you live on, say, second floor and there's two or three more floors above you, there's no smoke to bother your neighbors upstairs and whatever problems that come with um, living in, in confined communities like those. Now, Mr. Willy, mm -hmm. I can see it's a... Willy, Willy is this barbecue. barbecue. Yeah. Wood smoked. Yes. I, I don't think I have that patience to wait for seven hours. It, it sounds a long duration for me. Does it, uh, how does it put value for me? I, I know it, it's tasty, but is there any other added value to it that can guarantee me to wait for that duration? Okay, two things. First of all, because we, I mean, the, the heat is indirect. First, there's no charring. So this black, black maca, which uh, people say is, um, creates issues, uh, gout and those kinds of problems this meat doesn't have that charring and if there is it's very minimal number one number two because it cooks slowly a lot of the fat breaks down so it's easier to digest there are times you'll go for nyama then you eat meat now 
and even tomorrow you are still feeling like chakula imekwama kwa tumbo it's very difficult I've, I've not experienced that with this in fact part of the reason why i even started doing this was that because i'd go for nyama choma here locally or around here and i'd just be like it's a, yeah it's nyama choma but there's no there's no extra satisfaction to it in fact it's bringing digestive issues later on i don't know if it's an age thing or something but i i i started not liking that too much so when i th- when i started doing this pole 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 i realized oh it's nice and even when i'd read about it the fat renders out so you don't get very fat in it and the f- fat which you get is the one that's supposed to remain there the one that renders out is probably the one you shouldn't be eating in the first place so it renders out you remain with pretty good fat how easy is it to prepare and can i just place my my chicken there my pork there my chivon the goat meat can i just place it there and then i go my ways and after seven hours i'll get it ready or i'll have to come keep on checking keep on checking turning it around okay the turning around definitely doesn't happen once once you put the meat inside you just leave it that way because the the the, the heat is circulating and the, the smoke is circulating you don't need to turn anything it will hit the bottom and hit the top as well so it more or less in aiva more or less even to answer your seven hour question here's here's uh, the challenge for this type and that's why I'm, I'm i'm now planning to do the the vertical ones is this one needs to be fed all the time and because the heat is going horizontally across there's a lot of loss of heat but the vertical one because heat rises it will just rise that way and if um, what we are struggling now is to make sure that the seals are very tight on the doors so that it draws and in that drawing you can control the speed at which the burn is 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 uh, taking place so if you get a full box um, basket of charcoal inside they are going you should be able to get about 4 hours so literally you can put your meat in the morning go somewhere for four hours and come back and then how, how will i know that the chicken is ready uh normally all the meat there is ready yeah, normally it's, it's it's a factor of time and temperature but that's um an answer for experience from experience i would tell but there are thermometers which you can use last time was here i saw you with yeah, the, the probes yes. we leave it come to will is this and you'll get the system and he'll train you how uh, to check whether the yes, meat is absolutely, ready absolutely. now a very quick one huh? yeah. How long, how uh, uh, how many chickens can I place or uh, in this cooking chamber for this one particularly for this one Okay this double drum um I know I have been able to do a total of um 14 chicken and these were the big 2 kilo chickens 14 and like 38 kilos of pork so probably if it's chicken alone maybe 22 to 25 birds at one go I've seen some potato wedges there and uh, a chicken eh? <laughs> yes. is that what you have prepared for us yes 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 that's lunch for today that's lunch for us today yes, yes. Late i'm lunch, automatically maybe. hungry <laughs> <laughs> i hope you came with an appetite and no no i always tag along the, the appetite <laughs> good 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 they'll be good eating today can we invite farmers to come uh, on our february session yes farmers. and maybe you'll we'll prepare chicken for us and uh, whatever else uh, i do mbuzi as well i do pork as well and beef yeah beef not so much but mbuzi, um pork chicken and mbuzi those those i i i do very very well beef so we have a dairy event uh, in this yes, farm yes in february in february yes we will get chicken yes there'll be chicken there'll be pork uh, there'll be mbuzi so please if you can in february make a point to come um we'll talk a lot of dairy stuff and you'll also get to understand a bit more about this american style barbecue i can see a very beautiful lady there who is asking between now and february that day yeah. can i place some orders oh, will yes, i get yes, yes yes you can yes you can every weekend i grill uh if it's big orders i do them as well uh, during the week but but this is more a weekend a weekend thing to keep myself busy now that the, um, both households are down dairy farming is down and my other um, corporate conference work is down so I, i i do this to keep myself busy how, how do i place the order i just just call 
uh, if you want your meat on Saturday, at least by Thursday evening, uh, place your order by Thursday evening, maybe by 8 p.m. at the latest. I, what I do is I buy it on Friday and then I prepare it, leave it to, to marinate um, for the day and night. And then at 5.36 in the morning, I put it into the Jiko. So for orders of Saturday orders, order by Thursday evening. For Sunday orders, by Friday evening. How do we order? Maybe you have told us to call. Which number? Okay. My, my number is 0722 413099. I'll say that again. 0722 413099. Let the cuckoo sasa.